everyone's favorite, surface mount. As much as I want to keep using through-hole parts for new designs, more and more parts are only available in a surface mount package. Look at the LM13700 transconducted amplifier for instance. A very common part in synthesizers. All through-hole versions on DigiKey are unavailable, so it's SMT or nothing. In addition to buying some fine point tips for the soldering iron, make soldering small packages easier, I bought a binocular microscope. And you can see from the promotional picture of said microscope the problem I encountered. The head droops. This makes the entire thing unusable. You can try tightening the arm down all you want. Pressing my head against the eyepieces would cause it to droop again. Also the light's kind of garbage as well. So let's fix both problems and make this microscope finally functional. First thing I did was unthread the arm from the stand. Easier said than done because these four set screws had munged the threads on the arm. Eventually it did go. The idea going forward is to remount the arm 90 degrees with the pivot point parallel with the workbench so that it physically can't droop. Threading it back in required some mechanical advantage. Then I realigned the portion of the arm mounted to the microscope head to match this new alignment parallel to the table. Original hardware was used to put the arm back together, as it has plenty of holding strength when not trying to fight gravity. Now to do something about the light. Picked up this selfie light ring on eBay for about $8. It already has a gooseneck. The built-in controller has multiple modes, which I won't be using. After desoldering the wires, I remove the included clip. Now we're looking at the underside of the base of the microscope. The connector to the original light looks like a good a spot as any to mount the new one. Which of course doesn't fit. Nothing some unibed action won't fix. Another thing I replace on anything that I can is a captive plug. These are just the worst, always getting tangled and never long enough. So I added an IEC connector instead. The pot metal used for the base of this microscope didn't stand a chance against the Dremel tool. And after some drilling for some screws, there it is mounted. Now for the power for the light. I'm going to use this old phone charger. Plenty of power, and there's no phones anymore that use this connector. Thread in the cable through the gooseneck. And soldering the wires into position on the light ring. For those of you playing at home, this light ring was common positive, so I bridged the two negatives together so all the LEDs would come on at once. A little bit of hot glue to secure everything in place. Now to do the AC wiring. If you don't know what you're doing, please don't try this at home. First the ground is attached to the base. The hot wire through the fuse that was already built into the base and out of the fuse and up to the switch. Then from the switch the hot and neutral wire are attached to two crimp on spade connections it happened to snugly fit over the blade connectors on a North American plug. A ball of electrical tape will keep anything from shorting and hot glue for good measure. Now to test it before reassembly.
Now that I know it works, all the wires get tucked in and zip-tied down, and finally, the underside grill gets attached. And here we are, done. Plenty of light to work with, and a joy to use. The head on the microscope doesn't droop anymore, and the range of horizontal motion lets the microscope base be out of the way during use. It mostly has enough weight to stay in place, but if I need some extra reach, a furniture clamp holds it securely to the workbench. Also, to make it easier to film up close, I got one of those cheap HD microscopes that can record to an SD card. And, well, you get what you pay for. Still images aren't bad. Video leaves a lot to be desired. But it's still better than trying to film through the eyepiece of a monocular microscope. The stand that it came with really wasn't going to work for me either. As you can see, it runs out of room almost right away. Fortunately, the solution was fairly simple. A quick trip to the 3D printer and a lock line mounting ring solved everything. FYI, these helping hands use the 11.9mm knockoff ball size for the lock line, not the legitimate 12.5mm lock line. Now with the microscope upgraded, I can get to work on some more projects. I have a bunch of stuff already in the works that requires a lot of small surface mount soldering. So this project is something that will get a lot of other projects done. Hope you all enjoyed. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.